I compare the Sony a6000 versus the Sony a9. What is good YouTube? It's Dylan Camera Guy back at again with another video for you. I'm in Delano, California. There is a parade that's going to happen downtown here on their main street. It has to do with the Philippine Weekend Parade Festival. They're going to have a little parade here shortly in about an hour or less. And then from there, they're going to head out to the park and there'll be some more festivities and activities there as well. What I got with me today is two cameras. I've got the Sony a6000 and the Sony A9. I'll be comparing those two. So if you want to find out, make sure you stay tuned. If you're new to my channel and you're finding it for the first time, I go by that one camera guy. I make videos, tutorials, guides, and reviews on the Sony mirrorless system. If you'd like to catch the latest content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell when I produce content every single week on my channel. And my old subscribers, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit that like button and let's go ahead and get started. So the equipment I specifically have with me is the Sony a6000. With it attached is the 55 to 210 kit lens, I would consider it. It is a budget-friendly kit. And what we're going to do is not really try and say the a6000 is better than the Sony a9, which it really isn't in many ways. But what we're going to look at is can the Sony a6000, how much are you getting when you spend five to $600 on a camera versus one that's about $4,500 in and of itself? So. That's what we're going to be doing today with the Sony A9 on the other hand. I have the A9 basically and I went ahead and brought the 7300 G series lens uh, from Sony. I don't, I don't yet have the Sony 100 to 400 G Master but I think this is a really good pairing. It's a full frame lens and the 55 to 210 and the 7300 with their respective cameras and crop sensors and sensor sizes will give us roughly the same equivalent focal distance. So what I'll try and do today is switch and jump between these two cameras uh, as we test them out and see how well they do. All right, so the parade's over and I wanted to go ahead and share my thoughts shooting with the Sony a6000 as well as the Sony a9. First of all, shooting a parade is not really intensive. What you're shooting are very slow moving subjects and um, when you're shooting sports, it's a very different environment. What's really important with like shooting parades, for example, is actually framing your subject and framing them in a good way. So um, what's really great about the Sony mirrorless system is that that autofocus really locks on, especially the A6000, even the A9. So you can sort of focus and recompose while you're holding the focus. So it's not the old school thought of focus recompose, it's continuous autofocus and reframing uh, your shot as you are holding the shutter button halfway and acquiring focus. So that's how it came out for me. In terms of the image quality, I won't really know until we dive into the actual files in Lightroom and take a look at them. So I finally had the chance to go ahead and look at the photos in Lightroom and what I expected is exactly what happened. The Sony A9 with the 70 to 300 yielded sharper images with more detail um, out the box, whereas the Sony A6000 was sharp here and there, tend to be a little soft in some cases. And at times I even noticed these weird blooming scenarios where if the subjects were wearing white in a high contrast scene, I guess is the way you would put it, kind of got these white kind of cloudy areas happen. I don't know the best name for it. I'd love for you guys let me know in the comments below what the exact situation is. So the lens, the 55 to 210, um, again, a very budget, budget lens. 7300 G series, not so budget, uh, yielded better results. So something not too crazy out there. The one thing I will recommend is that just, you gotta keep your expectations in check and also you gotta process your files. I, I did add some sharpening to my images, especially the Sony a6000 um, to bring them up to, up to par. But if you just want absolute quality from the actual lenses and the body, um, in this case, you really don't need to spend $4,500 on an A9. 
you could get away with the same quality results with a Sony A7 Mark II uh, going to full frame in this case. And in addition to the Sony A6000, it doesn't really explain the ability of that camera to resolve detail and quality out of photographs. This isn't really the best example. You really want to pair your Sony a6000 with a better piece of glass. Now in the, in the upcoming video that you're going to see, I test out the a9 and the a6000 again, but I change their lenses. I use the 7200G Master on the a9, and I use the 7200F4 on the a6000, and you'll be pleasantly surprised on how well the a6000 keeps up against the a9 in that kind of situation. Back to myself out there. Folks, that's all I got for you in this video. If you found it helpful, give it a like, subscribe, and check out my other content. And with that said, I'm your host, Downwind Camera Guy, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.